And welcome back to another episode of Getting Creative With, the show where AADL staff engage with an arbitrarily chosen topic to stay playful, stay inspired, and creative. My name is Ksenia, and with me today are AADL staff members Mackenzie, Heidi, Aurora, and Christopher. And this week's theme was bottles. So, Mackie, what did you do this week? Okay, so let's see if this shows up well on camera. So this is one of them. Oh. You can see it at all. The mm -hmm. other one's better. This is not very obvious what it is. It has a one on it. It has wire, and I, I painted a bottle, bottle black with some shinier black paint, and then I used bronze. Well, it was more of a gold paint. I couldn't find bronze, and I dabbed it all over to make a kind of vintage bottle. I have a second one. That one comes up better on camera, I think. Ooh. Wow. So that's what it looks like. Mm. Yeah. You have the best glitter. Like I remember the 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 mask <laughs> one that you made, and you just have the best the best sort of like sheens and sparkles in your projects. <laughs> yeah, it's a very very nice like distressed mm -hmm. kind of finish in a way. Yeah. It's really. And then you hot glued these objects on there? Is that what? Uh, yeah, these were buttons. So if I can pull it closer, they're buttons. Oh, yeah. They're the fun steampunk gear buttons that I glued on. And let me tell you, that was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> so I watched a video do something similar. And I'm like, okay, I'll glue everything on. Everything's ready. And then I should be able to paint it easily and then dab it with some gold tint. No. No, you want to paint the bottle and all the parts first and then glue it on because as I was painting it, everything was falling off. The glue was, I guess, getting worn away by the paint. That was an experience. <laughs> Where did you get your buttons? Oh, these were at John Fabrics. They were just in the button section. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. What kind of paint do you use? Is that acrylic or is it? Uh, I use. Let me point this down more so I don't have to hold it as much. I used a regular gloss acrylic, and then I think it's an acrylic acrylic gold paint, but I don't know. I'd have to double check. Um, if you want me to double check, I can. So, do you paint it gold first, and then you put a layer of? dark colors? Is that no, why you No, I did. I painted it black first, and then I took a sponge, and I dipped it in the paint, and then I just dabbed it all over. Wow. And that's what made this kind of cool gold texture. I just love the, you know, you're talking about how the buttons and everything falling off, and to me it's like, you know, nothing says crafting with, you, you have to have minor disasters happening. You, you know? know, it was, it was, <laughs> this, this one was the worst, because it was just, I glued wire on, yeah. And I painted over and everything just flung off and I'm like, well, well, more glue it is. I just had to wait for it all to dry. I was really worried it was all going to fall off when I tried doing the dabbing. Cuz I really would have given up after that cuz <laughs> after if if you have to glue something 3 times to deal with the paint, too, it, it just was not working, but they look cool. Yeah. They're beautiful. What kinds of bottles are they? Do they are they just like right. this was a wine bottle that had a one on it already, so you can kind of see it mm -hmm. there. So I didn't have to attach that. Um, I just told my husband to chug it <laughs> so I could have it, which he he happily obliged. <laughs> and the other one was just a bottle I got at the store because we we have a lot of like eclectic jars and bottles but they all have like bits and pieces in them and I couldn't exactly ask him to drain everything <laughs> um but yeah well, they're beautiful they remind me of um something I would I would use in like a D and d um setting mm -hmm. of some sort like if I really wanted to set the mood I like doing the music in the background and you know, have the minis and stuff but also having a background for that sort of thing is really cool so yeah those are stunning and uh where are you gonna put them you know um 
I'll probably put this one this one up on display somewhere. We just got a couple shelves up, so I might put it on a shelf. Um, this one's probably going in the box downstairs. I know I plan on making a couple more of these, but little ones. Because as you said, for d and I was thinking of making like little health potion versions. Yeah. So they're cool and getting different kinds of the metallic to denote different kinds of potions. But, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, there's so cool. Uh... Yeah. Or oh, like a candle holder too. You could put like candles, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That would look cool once the wax started to drip onto it too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much for that. I love seeing all the beautiful things. They're gorgeous. And now I have an idea for a D&D &D setting. So. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Heidi, what kinds of things did you do with bottles this week? Um kind of less exciting but whatever <laughs> it's still cool uh, so initially I was excited because I really like the shape of a Perrier bottle I just find it to be a very just I don't know it's just the the way it tapers and everything I was really excited about using this um <laughs> but I didn't because you can see there's nothing on it um I decided to go with glass etching and I was getting ready to do it on that bottle, but then we had finished up a bottle of olive oil and I really liked how it was squared off and, and has these flat sides. I'm like, that's going to be a little bit easier to put stuff on. Um, so I was initially, I wanted to do something with stars or whatever, but like my contact paper is really old and it just wasn't sticking. So I ended up just using masking tape um, and kind of cut it. So it had that little wavy pattern, taped it up, put this armor etch glass etching on there and let it sit, wash it off. And then inside, maybe if I turn off the light, um, I have some like sparkly twinkly lights. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. we could see uh, unfortunately though, the opening's very large. So I had to put like a hair tie just to make sure it wouldn't fall through. So I need to engineer something so that looks a little bit better because presentation wise, not great. But otherwise I'm kind of pleased, you know. I always wanted to try glass etching. So this was, an opportunity to do that. So, that looks really cool. <laughs> so Heidi, how do you, what, what does the etching material look like? Do you, is it thick like a paste? Yeah, it's like a thick pasty paint that you put on. It's a little bit gritty. Um, I used a brand called Armor Etch. It's a glass etching cream that I just uh -huh. bought at uh, Joanne Fabrics. So, or Joanne's, it's not Joanne Fabrics anymore, my God date myself so <laughs> yeah yeah and how, how long you leave it on there like a long time or is that then you just wash it off or they say like five minutes but I was reading from some people's uh tutorials that they needed to have it on longer so um I actually did it twice just because I felt like at first it wasn't as dark as I wanted it but um so I left it on there for probably about 30 minutes and then you just basically rinse it off um, you don't even really have to have a cloth or anything. You can just gently with your hand with the water and it rinses away really well. So you don't need horribly toxic for the water system. What's that Christopher? <laughs> you don't need gloves. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think there is something on there about using gloves cause you know, it could be, you know, irritant, but okay. But it, it didn't burn glass. your fingers. But I, read the, I, used, I used like a foam brush pen. Like I didn't put it on with my hands, but when I was rinsing it, I did use my hand, but it was under the water and I think it was okay. But yeah, I don't think you really want to get it on your skin. You certainly don't want to breathe it in. Of course, my cats were very curious and I had to shoo them away to be like, now is not the time for you to get this on you. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I love the, the color, but also that it's kind of a squared off bottle um, yeah. with the curved uh, undulating sort of pattern. I think that's such a cool contrast um, yeah. with the tape. So how did you, like, did you just cut the tape first and then wrap it or did you just do it layer by layer or how did, how did that work? Yeah, it was just, um, you know, pieces of masking tape. So the masking tape's like maybe an inch wide. And so I set it on my cutting mat and then with an X-Acto knife, cut the, cut it into a wavy pattern and then just kept taping. I went from the bottom to the top. So yeah. as it turned out. Nice. So just individual strips that I put on there. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous. I love it. Yeah. Thanks. Very nice. Yeah. Functional and very, very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
hopefully it'll be, especially as it gets, the days get darker, it'll be nice little decorative accent somewhere, so. Yeah. Yeah, it looks really whimsical. Like, you know, I already made it. I love it. <laughs> um, Aurora, hello, good afternoon. And what have you made for us today? <laughs> Well, it's kind of interesting to see when the topic was bottle. I thought about glass, but then I thought, gosh, it's so hard to work on something in kind of shop. And I see that Heidi did, and <clears throat> did a good job of that. And so is um, Macy. Um, Macy did it too. But um, I think more in line of um, plastic bottles um, from the previous program that I did, the, the bird feeder tree, actually, when I was doing that, I already thought about the bottles this time. Um, <clears throat> I actually made um, a bird feeder, plastic bottles for the birds, um, using the wooden stick and decorate it. And also, I gave a try of, um, there was some tutorial about using, making our flowers out of plastic bottles. So I thought I'd give that a try too. Um, just for decoration, I was thinking maybe glue on top of my bird feeders, um, something that kind of recycle, reuse, um, you know, plastic. And, um, and that's what my idea at this time, rather than glass bottle, I just went to plastic bottle per se. That flower is amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they're both great. Yeah, how, they did you, <laughs> how did you make the the bird feeder? Did you just have a like a two liter bottle and put holes in it? Um, no, I didn't want to do such a big bottle. This is more like a one liter, I think, um, bottle. It's more sturdier than normal bottles, and um, they recommend that either you use a stick for the bird perch or the wooden spoon. So. I have to look for them. I had to search and look for them. And I thought that they are kind of good idea for the spoon because then the birds could perch and they usually recommend um, more than one. So they could all, there's tiny holes they could pack from it. Um, so that's what I thought that'd be a good way to, especially with winter coming, to put it out there for the birds. The spoon is a brilliant idea. It's like a little dish for the birds to eat out of. It's fantastic. And yeah. um, were was the flower that you made were that was that colored plastic already, or did you color the plastic yourself? Um, it's come out of softer bottles um, that's clear. I have to cut it and um, glue them and paint them with nail polish, or you could use an acrylic. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I love how you're taking care of the birds <laughs> for these last few weeks. <laughs> cool. Um, so is that bird feeder going to go next to your peanut butter feeder or do you have another place in mind for it? Actually, that peanut butter feeders, I think the squirrel attacked it or something. It's like kind of torn apart. So no, I'm actually hanging this one next to my birdhouse on the back side of my backyard, so. Nice, oh, it's so pretty. Um, and yeah, the flower topper is just really, really beautiful too. It's just like, yeah, it's natural looking in a way and uses plastic so prettily. I don't know, it's just, it's funny that you can make something so beautiful out of a plastic bottle. Yeah, so there was one gentleman, the huge one, a giant one, and I thought it's amazing, but no, I just tried my hands on a small one instead. Mm -hmm. Nice. Do you have the, the cap on those bottles and then uh, you've, you've cut into them to make a flower shape or are those petals individual? Uh, so it actually is a bottle that was cut in half and this is the top half, and this is the bottom half, and this is actually another bottle. I, I actually need like one and a half bottles. I kept the cap on, and I slide in from the uh, top one, slide into the bottom one, I and see. then it's just cut it. So then I just glue them together, and then I use 
the top half of this one to, to paint the yellow for the inside. So it's, it's about two bottles. I see. So precise. It's a cool um, hair uh, ornament, like a fascinator, you know. Oh. <laughs> it just, it's so pretty. I love it. Yeah. It's kind of nice because the uh, nail polish is translucent. Mm -hmm. So that it's, it's very shiny. And also that I learned that if you want to leave it outside, you should paint it underneath rather than on top. So then it will protect the paint more better. So. Cool. That's gorgeous. And I would love a hat or a headband with a flower like that on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, sweet. Well, thank you. And now I will tell you what I have done for this week's project, which I think getting creative with is going to turn into an excuse for me to just keep playing with melted plastic. Um, because I took what we, what we did a few weeks ago with um, blocks and I started playing with, um, with the blocks that I made, made more blocks out of bottle caps. Um, so I'm actually wearing mine. I made necklaces. Oh. So I made, these pendants out of um, out of the blocks, and that's my dog. Hey guys, um, so I did that by making making the the block and I put them in the mold. I pressed them and everything, and then I took it out. I made this one smaller by cutting um, cutting one of them in a few pieces, and then I used my husband's workstation downstairs to plane and shape and drill a hole into the side as well. For the string and the uh, the yarn, and it came out looking very very pretty in a way. It's sort of like marbled and lapis lazuli almost. Um, but I'm thrilled with how beautiful it it came out, and I now have two brand new necklaces. So there wow. it is. But um, yeah, th that was super fun. I was just, I was really happy to have an excuse to use those, those bottle caps that I've been collecting from like Tetra packages and like milk bottles and things of that nature. So really satisfying. I think there are like 30 something bottle caps in this thing. So condensing them has been really fun to see too, um, just to, to see how much I can compress them and to minimize the, um, the waste, I guess that's, that comes from the bottle. So really fun. <laughs> How do you melt them again, Xenia? These I just put, because it's HDPE um, plastic, so it's high density, and it doesn't release a, a fume when you just kind of melt them at a, at a low temperature. I put them in a toaster oven that I don't use for food or anything, um, about, what, 300 degrees or so on parchment paper, and I just leave them in there. I take them out, and I have glass working pliers that I use to work and mix the um, material together. As you can see, it's kind of marbled and wavy. Mm -hmm. So that's, I, I use the pliers to work it and shape it and to pile it on top of itself as it's melting. Um, that way I don't have just a puddle. And then I stick it into a parchment lined mold and um, press it with some clamps. Right. On the small one, you, you say you have to cut it. So you cut it while it's still hot or is it after it form or is it? Yeah, so I cut it um, after it dries and after it cools completely. Um, one of them, I actually, this one, when I was drilling into it, it was still kind of warm at first. And it, it almost started trying to gum up the, um, the drill, so that wasn't a fun time. But they cool relatively quickly, just because plastic isn't a great conductor um, of heat. So the heat dissipates pretty quickly. It takes about an hour or so for this size block to cool down totally. And in the meantime, I can at least shape the outside, but yeah, it's, it has to be like super dry and cold. Um, and then otherwise it cuts a little bit like very, very soft wood. So pretty easy to work with, thankfully. <laughs> and um, yeah, the, the plastic shavings that I created from um, like planing thing and remelt those down if I you know want to, so. Just keep on reusing them. Really. It's ingenious. It's yeah. so fun. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I don't know. My husband and I were 
talking about this the other day. It's like, what if we make a bigger mold? What if we make like a two by four out of a bunch of bottle caps and plastic bags and like try to build something with it? So again, I might just keep working with plastic for the duration of the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, in the meantime, I have something pretty to wear. Yeah. All righty. Well then, Christopher, last but not least, what have you made for us today? Well, I don't know if you can tell, it's a little bit dark in here. Um, it's hard to get it as dark as I want, but I decided to make a lightning cloud and it's a cumulus cloud. And I'm gonna try to turn it on here. Let's see. Oh, one second. Well, my, I just lost my connection. It'll just be a minute. Does this project involve coding? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, like a Raspberry Pi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let's see if it'll flash lightning. Ooh. So I have it on a random a uh, lightning flash that I, I wrote code for, and it's yeah. kind of fun. And this was a an idea that my daughter had. Um, so what I did is I got a windshield wiper fluid bottle and I stuffed Christmas lights inside of it. And then I wrapped some uh, leftover polyfill around it. And I hooked it up to something called a relay switch which is just a, it looks like an, an outlet and it has two little wires coming out that I attached to a little computer that I coded to randomly flash or turn on the relay switch, which uh, has this plugged into it. Anyway, so it was a lot of fun and it got to use a lot of different things, glue all the way to code, so. That's fun. <laughs> it's really cool. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. I had the most challenge actually getting the polyfill to look like a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did great. And well, you should do more of them. And you're all set for like Halloween decorations. Right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you could fill up your whole like, front yard with Halloween decorations just coated with raspberry pie. Right. <laughs> that is so cool. I, I think you should hang it with the fish wire, with the then float it in the cloud, and then it would one of your story time to. to oh fish. yeah. That's a great I, idea. Doing uh, do Halloween stories, reading some Halloween books. Right. Have a dark room with it flashing behind you. Right. And <laughs> also the sound effect of it to go, you know, really loud. It's kind of really. Right, I was thinking about hooking some speakers up and playing some thunder when it flashed. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe you should do a uh, getting creative with uh, additional steps on a project. <laughs> Process art, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh so my it was God. fun to put together. So do you oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just exclaiming. I just keep on exclaiming about how delighted I am with that because it's just, it's such a cool project that how would you even, you know, I, the fact that you saw bottles and were like, I'm going to make a cumulonimbus cloud and make it flash at random intervals using code. I mean, that's, that's what, that's what library employees are all about, right? <laughs> Making interesting connections. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to glue the uh, um, around the bottle? Is that what it is? And even the the top and all over? Is that I what did. I did. used just rubber cement. Oh, rubber cement. And it's the same rubber cement I used to glue the beard onto my face. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there must be a healthier way to do that. But I just slather the rubber cement on and then press the polyfill beard right up. Onto my face. <laughs> yeah, there is take... face glue. Yeah. <laughs> There's like even for like you know to glue eyelashes and stuff. You can get it at the drugstore. Rubber cement. Yeah. 
Oh, it smells God. good. It really yeah. does. Oh, yeah. I hate the smell. <laughs> but you know, the other thing about this project is that I like to throw things out and get rid of them because I just like a minimalist work environment. But I'm learning that the more crap you have in your house and the more <laughs> piles of stuff you have, the more you have to draw from when you want to make a costume or a project or a craft or anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm struggling with, you know, the minimalist side of me and the crafty side. <laughs> that is a good proverb to end on. Keep your crap for crafting and costuming. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for everything all the time for coming in every single week and having these really cool projects for you know, inspiring me um, in this very strange year um, <laughs> of quarantine and for helping me to stay creative. It's been such a pleasure. So thank you. And I will see some of you next week for triangles. <laughs> thank Have you Kenny and everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your show. Have a good afternoon, guys. <laughs> Thank you.